Hi. Mikel Arteta obviously has been confirmed just around the corner. Yeah. Um, and the, with the Premier League meeting this morning, what, what, what is the very latest that you've heard about this weekend? Um, we are preparing still for the game, which is difficult, bearing in mind we've had a, um, a week which has been uh, disrupted. Uh, our preparation's not been able to, to be as uh, a, a normal week based on the fact, I'll give you an update of where we're at ourselves. Um, we've had players, uh, as most people will have done, who have had uh, symptoms of not being well, and that's not to say they're all the same. We've had players who have um, experienced uh, illness this week, uh, who have been um, stayed at home. Uh, we were due to have a, a, a day yesterday off-site um, to do something different, but decided against that uh, because of uh, the growing concerns surrounding uh, coronavirus. Uh, so in the end, uh, we told all the players to stay at home. Indeed, all the technical staff as well, all the training ground staff. So, you know, it's it. We've done that as a uh, as a precautionary measure because we've currently got one player who's been um, uh, awaiting test results um, on his symptoms, and then we'll we'll uh, we'll look at how we take it further. I mean, yesterday morning, um, myself. Gino, um, Philippe, our, our, our technical director, and, and Scott Duxbury, uh, we we sat and discussed how uh, how we continue to deal with the situation here. Uh, we've tried to be as proactive as, as possible um, to look after the interests of our of our players um, and their families uh, and all the staff here. So. You know, it, it's it's not a it's not an easy situation to, to be involved in. I mean, we currently don't have uh, anybody with uh, a, a positive uh, return of a result, um, but I think it's in the current climate, it's it's pretty inevitable that we've all or we all will have contact with somebody who um, either has the virus or has possibly even recovered from it, we don't know. Um, I think in the meantime, we continue to be vigilant and do what is right for the well-being of um, all the staff who work at this football club. And of course, it's, it, we have a greater responsibility as well, and that is that, that, that uh, everybody who um, you know, the, the, the country is in a, a state, as indeed the world is at the moment, in a state of uh, anticipation as to what it means to them. And so, you know, we're no different. We're trying to, uh, we're trying to look after um, the interests of uh, the people who work here and their wider families. And yeah, so it's it's very important that we keep this in. Uh, it, it, in context, I mean, I'm here supposedly to be talking about uh, a game yeah. tomorrow, and that's uh, that, uh, as it stands at the moment. You know, we were we were instructed yesterday um, by the Premier League that that the game goes ahead, and that was after we'd informed them of uh, our situation uh, in regarding our players uh, and fact that we've had several individuals within the club and that's staff included that's not just players yeah. who have had uh, uh, symptoms that you know are uh, we need to be cautious of I mean is, is there any indication exactly how many players have, have shown symptoms how many people have been kept away from the training ground everybody yesterday yeah everybody um, we've uh, as, as I've said we've had several players who have had different symptoms so we've had somebody with a chest infection somebody with a um, uh, somebody with um, uh, an upset stomach somebody you know with players who have, have shown uh, flu-like symptoms so th there's a there are uh, not everybody's the same uh, we have people who feel okay many people who feel okay as well um, but of course we we 
we've tried to uh, introduce measures at the training ground over the last two, three weeks. In fact, with you know, like everybody, uh, I presume will have done with um, you know hand washes, etc. And, and um, uh, so you know, we we do what we can, but we, we play in a it's a contact sport, you know. Well, and then until I suppose we hear otherwise, the game is is going ahead. Is, yeah, yeah. Is, is, is training going to happen as normal today? Are there going to be bodies in and around the training ground today? That will be dependent on what I hear after this press conference in terms of what's been been discussed. I mean, uh, you know, I believe there's there's currently a meeting being held yeah. for the Premier League. Um, uh, I don't think we had any great leadership last night listening to the Prime Minister. I was totally underwhelmed by the, um, yeah, by the lack of leadership and clear message uh, in terms of what what was said uh, in that press conference. Um, I think it's important that, that, I mean, we are trying to be proactive ourselves and I think what is very important is that, you know, uh, hopefully the Premier League um, will make strong decisions based on what is right for uh, everybody within within the game. Uh, have you noticed if, if players have been you know, anxious, scared about everything that's sort of going on, you, you and your staff included? I think it's inevitable to be worried and, and you know, players will, be, we have a, a squad which uh, is, is multicultural, uh, players from different parts of the world, um, there's going to be anxiety about their families, for sure, and and that is our primary concern. Um, so, it's very difficult to wear the two hats of preparing for a football match when actually um, the hum humanitarian side is is a lot more important. Um, but as I've already pointed out, um, we have to wait to hear what Premier League decide and. Uh, Whatever they, d they decide, we will we will abide by. I'm sorry, just before I move on, can I just confirm you said that you were awaiting the test results for one? Mm -hmm. Is that right? Okay. Yeah. Um, but did, did you name that player? No, well? I wouldn't dream of naming a player. <laughs> um, I, I want to protect individuals' interests at the moment, yeah, for sure. Because um, he, he, he could be okay. Yes, absolutely. And we know he is. Um, yeah. I've got to ask a couple of questions about the game. Yeah, sure. Go Please go ahead. Um, in terms of the, the overall fitness of the squad, in terms of how everyone is feeling, whether they have picked up any knocks, how, what's the latest on, on that? Uh, uh, yeah, apart from uh, potentially players not feeling well, yeah. uh, we've got a pretty f fit squad in terms of availability, um, injury-wise. Yeah. So, which is, uh, yeah, uh, that's good for us, yeah. Cool. Um, you're all Club Leicester. When you see them doing so well, is that uh, sort of a, a happy feeling inside? When you know, obviously they've won the league, but now, now that they seem to be re-emerging again, <coughs> as, as, a, as a big force in this country. Okay, um, I will answer the question, but but I think you also need to understand that that my job now is to uh, prepare and invest all my energy in Watford. Um, my, uh, it's inevitable I get qu asked questions uh, when we're going to be playing each other, uh, and I understand that. But my my um, focus is very much on us. Um, I'm I'm aware of my part in the Leicester story. Um, I think it's to see them now with somebody like Brendan Rodgers uh, managing them. I think is. A really positive thing for them as a football club. He is uh, a man with vision and a man who will uh, take the club forward. And, and I think after their <coughs> Premier League win, that would be a very difficult thing to then take it to the next level. Just bearing in mind of what an incredible story that was. So um, he's certainly the right man to take the club forward. And I, I think they will have a uh, a sustained period of success with Brendan there, for sure. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, I'd like to ask one, one question at the back here. Yeah. Just going back to the corona situation. Yeah. I mean, the Premier League is the only major league in Europe. 
this could get overtaken is still playing. Are you surprised? Are, are football people concerned that it's still going ahead, as, as you say? As you say? I think the, the rate with which uh, the situation appears to have escalated this week, I think has um, probably sharpened everybody's um, minds and uh, opinions on the situation. Uh, you know, I hear stories about us playing games behind closed doors and, and, and I feel that that is rather a misplaced uh, a misplaced sort of uh, point of view. I mean, what about us? What about the coaching staff? What about the players? It's a contact sport. Play behind closed doors. I think it's, I think it's, um, uh, yeah, naive um, at best. And it's, in my own opinion, no, I don't. This is not the club's opinion. I think it's a stupid idea. So a position might be just to suspend the league for a month. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, it, it would be. I, I think it would be. The Premier League would come out with a lot of credit if they took a positive action rather than wait to be instructed by the government what to do. Um, we will only see more and more cases emerging. I'm sure. Uh, and and uh, what is very important is that that we protect the interests of of everybody. I mean, it again. Uh, the fans of football clubs want to see their teams play. They want to see their t well, they want to support them. And I think it's only right that that is the case. I don't think playing games behind closed doors does anything other than um, try and fulfil contractual obligations. So for me, it's about the well-being of people. It's not necessarily about. It's easy for me to say that, of course, but that's what I believe. And, and we have to uh, we have to be mindful that um, this problem, this worldwide problem, is not going to go away. It is going to run its course. Uh, it's not something that we can stop. And we, in the football industry, uh, have a responsibility to ourselves and each other to make sure that the well-being of everybody concerned is is uh, taken care of first and foremost. So, you know, I, I, as I said earlier, it was inevitable that there were going to be cases confirmed, and uh, uh, and I'm almost certain that there will be people who uh, have it and will not uh, will not know about it. There might even be people who have had it and have recovered from it. Um, I'm not a medical expert. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know um, enough of the facts about it. But all, you know, we, we here have been uh, at the football club have been very, very uh, diligent in terms of trying to minimise the risk for the people who work uh, within the football club, both at the stadium and here at the training ground. But we, you know, we we, we can't. Uh, can't affect how you know I'm sure you go to the supermarket you you know we are going to be exposed to it all of us just finally I'll say you talk about making contingency plans are, are the clubs do you think in general set up <coughs> if the season was to prolong into say into the summer of June July to get it finished to get it finished uh, let's let's <laughs> I think what's important is that first and foremost we we deal with uh, the situation in terms of uh, trying to uh, look after the well-being of people involved in the industry. In terms of what the season will look like if it's suspended to start with, uh, I don't know. Um, we have to be prepared for any eventuality, and that I think that will be something that will be discussed. Uh, they, this is going to be, I think, a, a, a fluid situation in, in the sense that um, there has to be a clear uh, pathway of, of, of action, first and foremost. We, we have to be decisive with uh, how, the, um, how the, the, the problem, the situation is dealt with initially. In terms then of what would happen with uh, 
the league season uh, being concluded at a later date, then we'll see how that goes as we go along. But I, I'm, I'm not making those decisions. Uh, I have to be, uh, I have to be uh, in my own position, uh, able to look at both sides of this in terms of still being able to prepare the team and look after the interests of the football side of it, but also, more importantly, look after the people involved here as people. Yeah. Has it been a challenge to manage the potential disappointment of the fans compared to a more competitive South Wales? In what way? I don't understand the, the angle. Are you talking about if there's has behind closed doors? Has it been a challenge to balance the potential disappointment of the fans with the need to catch a South Well, we haven't got to a stage where that is a fact yet. So are we talking about playing behind closed doors? Closed doors? I, no, and I, I think they, they would be, um, I think they would be very understanding of the fact that it, this, this is more, look, we're talking about sport versus the well-being of people here. Um, uh, I think what's important is, is that, that we look after the interests of, yeah, everybody associated with the football club, and that includes the fans, of course. <coughs> Of course it does. I mean, I, I, I heard the uh, one of the statements from the Prime Minister last night talking about being uh, would be um, listening and, and the decisions would, would be based on science and that there's not necessarily a, um, uh, an, a greatly uh, a greater risk with people being together at sporting venues. Um, if, if that's based on science, fine, but that doesn't necessarily make sense to me. Um, but uh, I, if, if that's a fact, then that's a fact. Um, uh, what I would say is that, that, that I wouldn't want our fans to be going into, an, into a situation where they're fearful of contracting something that could possibly affect either themselves or a member of their family. So I think we have a responsibility to, uh, to, or the, the industry has the ability to, to take action and make decisions which uh, are in the in interest of everybody. Hey, click here for more videos.